All right, hey, there's Brian. All right, this is just a brief update to uh, talk about the uh, progress on my Konica collection. So I've decided to pursue uh, Konica as a uh, featured system on this channel because nobody else is. It is a forgotten system, and it is outstanding, and um, I, I, I can't speak highly of it enough. The Hexanon lenses are as good as Tacomars and Nikors, and the auto reflex cameras are as good as... Um, Nicromats, and that's no exaggeration. So, uh, I've previously introduced the T2 in my initial video when I talked about the uh, auto reflex system, so that's old news. Uh, likewise, the 52 millimeter f1.8. This is probably the cheapest, and I mean, I want to say least desirable, but there's really no such thing as an, as an undesirable hexanon lens. Uh, but this thing is, is it is low demand, let's put it that way. The 52 millimeter f1.8, it's not really known for anything, um, but it has a nice vintage look to it. I've shot a couple rolls of film with it, and uh, it's, uh, it, it's decently sharp, and it has a pleasing bokeh, and uh, just a nice, uh, nice good old-fashioned, you know, rendering look to it. Um, no complaints. It's a nice little lens. And, and they, they go, I mean, they're dirt cheap. These things go for like 20 bucks in really nice condition, so um, it, it's a really, really a good bargain. Even less than twenty dollars, I think sometimes you can get them for ten or fifteen. Um, so that's for the uh, fifty-two. Um, my my new acquisition is uh, well, some lenses, three lenses, and uh, well, the, the the TC I've talked about before, um, and I'm continuing to uh, make my uh, go go through a roll of, uh, or an extra roll of a few, a few rolls of, of uh, film with the TC. Um, because it's my first time owning one of these. I had a T2 and a T3 some years ago, but no, this is my first experience with the TC. And I really like it. Um, it's, uh, it's really lightweight. It doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel, um, uh, you know, plasticky. It, uh, it feels like a nice, solid little camera, and it's roughly the size and, and weight of an Olympus OM-1, which is a big deal. Um, so one of my recent acquisitions was this 40 millimeter f1.8 lens. This is probably one of the most famous Hexanon lenses. Uh, and they're not as dirt cheap as I would expect, uh, given the, the sort of lost, forgotten status of Konica in general. Um, I suspect these lenses are really popular with people who adapt to mirrorless because it is a pancake style. It's a very, uh, it's, a, it's a flat uh, lens. And it is famous for being extremely sharp. I had one of these years ago, and I can confirm um, the 41.8 is, is famously sharp. Uh, bokeh, eh, I'm not going to swear by that. I'll have to do some more tests. Um, back, you know, 15 years ago when I had one of these, I wasn't really thinking about bokeh because it just, it wasn't the fad that it, that, uh, that it is today. Um, but it is razor sharp, and, uh, and, it's, and it's thin and light. And so it, it mates really nicely with the, uh, with the TC and just makes for a really, really um, uh, comfortable package, uh, which would be great for street shooting. Um, so that's coming up. I also picked up a 200 millimeter uh, F3.5. Um, this is a big old honking lens. It is not small. Uh, I've shot one and a half rolls or half a roll with it. Yeah, I think about half a roll with it, um, and so far so good. Uh, what I'd like to do, I'd like to see how it works out as a, as a portrait lens, um, but the weather's just been too cold lately and rainy to, uh, to get outside and, and, and get any decent portrait shots. In fact, it's been really lousy weather for shooting outdoors um, lately around here. It has been uncharacteristically rainy in, in my part of the world here for the past few weeks. Um, so, I'm, um, again, looking forward to getting a little more experience with the 200 millimeter f3.5 and these things are dirt cheap uh less than 100 dollars you know maybe 50 bucks 70 dollars you know for, for one of these in really nice condition it's got a built-in hood uh filter size is what is a filter size on this thing oh 67 millimeter filter size so it is not a small lens uh, that is one of my criticisms of the con of the, of the hexanons is, is they usually they, most of them are not particularly small I think that's why the 40 millimeter pancake stands out. Um, so looking forward to getting some more experience with this. And finally, the 135.35. There were several versions of the 135.35 made by Konica over the years. Um, this is the most recent one. It has the aperture that closes down to f22. Only the most recent 
uh, hexagon lenses had the aperture closed down to 22. All the others closed down to only 16, including, surprisingly, the 235. The 235 only closes down to 16. The 200 millimeter Nikkor, the F4, closes down to F32. Likewise, uh, most Nikon uh, or Nikkor 135 millimeter lenses close down to F32. Um, Konica, only 16. So that's uh, so somewhat unusual. But the um, later on, I want to say in the mid to late 70s, at some point, Konica decided that uh, their uh, their stuff was too big and clunky, so they you know they they downsized the cameras to the TC and then later the T4 was built on the same chassis, and they also uh, downsized the lenses, uh, and in doing so they modified the optical formulas, and generally I, I'm suspicious of the modifications because at that time uh, Konica wasn't doing too well financially and. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not so sure if the formulas represented an improvement, I, sus, I suspect not. Um, so in general, for optical re for, for reasons of optical quality, it's probably best to avoid the F22 hexanons, that is the hexanons that close down to F22, because only the most recent um, hexanon lenses close down to F22. They all have the, um, the rubber focusing grip. Um, and they all tend to be a little bit smaller and lighter than their predecessors. Uh, so that's nice because hexanons are kind of big and clunky, but uh, um, I'm just, I, I'm not convinced that the, uh, that the change in optics was, was necessarily for the better from an optical standpoint. But we'll find out. We'll see. I'm, I'm looking forward to shooting this against maybe the, um, you know, doing a comparison with uh, the contemporary Pentax and um, Nikkor. So that's what I've got coming up. Um, you can look forward to this. I've got some more stuff on the way as well. In addition to all this, uh, I've got a few more lenses, uh, one camera, and um, very much looking forward to really getting into the, into the Konica system over the coming months and um, doing some more videos, getting the word out. This is a forgotten system, and it is you, you can pick these things up for pennies on the dollar in terms of their worth. You really can. I know that uh, Canon and Minolta are really good deals also, um, but Konica, I, I, just, I think Konica has a few advantages. Um, metal built like a tank, copal square shutter, and the Hexanon lenses, which are, are um, undoubtedly as good as anything made by Nikon or Pentax. Um, Canon and Minolta can't say that, um, any of that. So anyway, uh, that's my two cents worth for the day. That's my update. Um, I hope you stay tuned. Please subscribe, check out the links below, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.